What is up, everybody? Welcome back to the GZ Chop Shop Podcast. It has been pretty much like over a month since our last our last episode. We uh we took a break. Um decided to recuperate, work on our other podcast. We were working on the Afterthoughts After Dark and Gunpowder Red. Uh so we are back. We're happy to be back. Um missed you guys and everything and a huge huge shout out and thank you to all of our patreon supporters uh for your continued support of all of our podcasts we really really appreciate it thank you so very much and if you guys love the gz shop shop podcast and you also want to support us check us out on patreon patreon.com forward slash osn media and also don't forget to visit our store the gz shop.com and grab yourself some amazing podcast swag and other apparel and and check out our whole new lineup of items. Uh, It's actually updating. I'm trying to get into the process of updating it weekly. So make sure you guys poke your head in there because there could always be something new. You never know when sales are going on. So make sure to go check that out. Uh, And now as in typical fashion, if anyone's ever attended my Twitch live streams before the show started, (laughs) Riverside was having a hard time wanting to play the intro. So it was like a good 40 seconds that you guys missed of us just looking at each other and Warner's going, you good? Like, eh, you know, DZ Chop Shop Studio acting up. Didn't like, didn't like us taking that month off. Um, but we're good now. So we're rolling into the show. So I know Warner's, you are like, you, you were nibbling at the bits. You got something juicy for us. In, you know, um, Hopefully everyone that's listening now is caught up uh, back back a few months ago. I don't remember exactly what the date was. I really got to start uh, like time stamping these things permanently in my files here. Uh, but Sony is getting sued and it's not just from one particular company or anything like that. It's, it's from uh, a, a group of people that are pretty much, pissed off uh regarding uh digital prices so i know the article i sent you guys was kind of to the point sony playstation is being sued for uh five billion euros by nine million claimants amid accusations it ripped people off with overpriced games and in-game purchases um and, and we'll touch on that article a little bit it doesn't go quite into depth but um this is the one i wanted to uh jump into Sony faces lawsuit over alleged monopoly pricing of PlayStation downloads. So I'm going to read this article. Okay. And then when we're done, you'll be able to go. Yes, you did call that a few months ago, Warners. And you guys will understand why. So Microsoft and Nintendo also maintain digital storefronts that provide the only legitimate way to download software on the Xbox and switch platforms, of course. But the lawsuit says the PlayStation store differs from its console competition for two reasons. One, Sony became the only console maker to stop allowing the sale of digital game codes through brick and mortar and online retailers. In doing so, Sony specifically intended and did eliminate price competition from other digital video game retailers limiting players to a single source for purchasing any digital PlayStation content and forcing those players to pay a higher price for digital PlayStation games than they would in a free and unrestrained competitive retail market. So the suit suggests that where download codes are available from outside retailers, the retailers compete against um, or amongst themselves and with the end console stores to offer the best price. That seems somewhat true in other console markets. As of this writing, digital codes for games like Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition and new Super Mario Brothers are selling for $39.99 on Amazon, less than $59.99 for direct Uh, purchase through the Nintendo online store, but the suit doesn't give any similar pre 2019 examples of digital PlayStation games that were cheaper through retail download codes than through the PlayStation store itself. Instead, it provides a handful of examples where digital PlayStation titles are currently more expensive than their disc based counterparts at retail. 
the lawsuit tries to argue that in a truly competitive digital marketplace, downloadable game prices at retailers would be even cheaper than these discs. There is no legitimate reason digital games should be more expensive than their physical counterparts. In fact, given the cost saved on packaging and distribution, prices for digital games in a truly competitive market would likely be lower than they are for games on a disc. At the same time, the suit acknowledges that physical games are not substitutes for digital games and that an increase in price for digital PlayStation games will not cause a significant number of consumers to switch to buying physical copies of PlayStation games instead. By that argument, cheaper physical games don't seem like good evidence that the Sony controlled digital versions of those games are necessarily overpriced. The suit also says that Sony's pricing controls are particularly pernicious because consumer continues to switch from discs to digital games in an ever-increasing number, with digital sales making 62% of PlayStation sales in 2020. But the fact that consumers increasingly willing to pay those monopolistic prices for digital games, again, suggests that the comparison to disc-based prices are not that relevant. The second difference between PlayStation consoles and others, the suit argues, is that the PlayStation game publishers must see total control over the retail price to Sony. The suit cites a PlayStation global developer and publisher agreement filed with the SEC that states local Sony interactive entertainment affiliates have the sole and exclusive rights to set the retail price to users for digitally delivered products sold or otherwise made available for purchasing on or through PlayStation network in its territory and to modify any digitally delivered products retail prices at any time without notice to publisher. This is in contrast to Microsoft and Nintendo, which allow developers who sell games through their platforms to set the retail price. It's not clear how often Sony uses this clause to enforce pricing changes on digital PlayStation games or how Sony uh, enforces prices are from the ones recommended by publishers. Nonetheless, the suit alleges that Sony foreclosed price competition among video game publishers to a significant degree because they can no longer execute a strategy of offering lower retail prices to gain a higher share of sales. That last part was literally my first thought. It's like, as you were getting further into the article, I was thinking, I said, oh, they, they want a bigger slice of that pie. <laughs> and they don't have another way of getting it. So we, we all have our issues with Microsoft and Sony um, for various reasons. Uh, but Sony really dropped the ball on this one and they got caught. That's what happened. Uh, enough people came to 9 million claims. 9 million people came together from different backgrounds who all, you know, share a common thing, gaming they all have PlayStations and they said, no, you, you cannot make us pay that much more for digital content when you have the discs that are going for, according to this article, the, uh, the same price or even cheaper. So what are, what are y'all's thoughts on this lawsuit? Um, well, first touching on that, the, Cost of physical. This is something we discussed a long time ago. We when we had the debate about our physical and digital, should they be valued at the same? And so many uh, statistical experts came out and said, "Well, the value is the same because it's the game." And they came out with all these reasons of X, Y, and Z. And and we always said, "We're like, I don't know. If anything, the physical should be considered more valuable because you're you're getting tangible product." You know, you're, yeah, the artists get paid, the people that package it, you know, the instruction booklets, when there were instruction booklets and the disc itself, you're getting tangible product with your game where the digital is just the game, which as in another conversation we had, and as Ubisoft has proven, you don't own. So at any moment, they can remove that from the library without your consent. So you pay full price for a long-term rental, basically. 
when they wake up and say, you know, we don't want to provide the servers anymore. We're killing it. Your $60 is just gone. And now they've Sony has proven that our conversations of the past and are agreeing that digital should be valued less than physical has been proven because now they're valuing digital at more than physical. Yeah. Well, right, right here, uh, the, the legal claim, first of all, again, is a collective uh, action against the comp, the gaming company brought by consumer rights champion, Alex Neal. It accuses the company of breach of competition law by abusing its market power to impose unfair terms and conditions on game developers and publishers forcing up prices for consumers. This is the part right here that, that I'm like, holy shit. I knew something was off by how much these freaking digital games are costing compared to the disc counterparts. It allegedly ripped people off by charging a 30% commission on every digital game and in-game purchase made through the PlayStation store. They must be working with Apple. That 30% is a very famous number. Consumers have been overcharged for their digital gaming purchases by as much as 5 billion euros over the last six years. I think so. What? How old is the, the PS5 now? It's going into a couple, a couple year years old. Now. Yeah. Because yeah, it came out and towards half. the end of 2020. Yeah. So, end of this year, we'll be heading into year three. So, towards the end of the PS4 life cycle, as they were gearing up and hyping up their next console within that six year, six year time frame. Uh, Digital gaming was picking up. It was easier. It was convenient. Why do I need to wait in line at a GameStop when I can pre-order it last second and get all the same stuff? Well, no line, I, no fuss. I didn't. I didn't know. And, and again, this, I don't have a PlayStation anymore. My PlayStation Four died, and then I wasn't able to get a PlayStation Five for a while. So I was like, whatever. So I did not know that. Sony was the only gaming company that stopped allowing uh, third party uh, purchases of digital game content and that you can only now go through their store. You used to be able to go somewhere else and purchase the digital game and you'd be able to with, the code, with the code, you'd be able to play the game. So in um, that sense, they, they truly gave everyone one option monopolized that option and then started ripping people off and they got caught. Yeah. Um, but to not let Nintendo and Microsoft off the hook in this regard, Microsoft, Microsoft has a big, oh, they're next. Th this yeah. is where it starts. I told you this shit was going to happen a few months. At least it was at least a few months ago. I said, I said, people are going to start suing these gaming companies for overpriced digital content. And the other thing is, Here's Sony's the, just getting it first. Sony's getting it first because they waited. They waited too long to implement no, I, something like that. I think they got greedy. Microsoft and Nintendo, especially Microsoft, as greedy as they are, they still allow third party purchases and you can still use those codes allowing for more. I, I'm going to use the word, but fair play. Uh, of fair grounds of purchasing and, and marketing and, and, you know, these consumers being able to get what they want and not have to go directly to the store. Well, Sony, when you think about it, Sony made it made back to Microsoft. Look at all the IPs they've been buying up. They have so many cut deals. You won't know it, but the people that they allow, because somewhere along the line, they have records of all those third parties. And you best believe they've got some un under the table partnerships with them because it's right. If they came out and said, Hey, we got all of these people would be like, mm, this is a little, little, little sus here. Right. And, and, and I don't think Microsoft's too far behind Sony, but Sony's catching the heat first because they gave everyone one option, one option to make purchases and one direction to go in. And then everybody's like, okay, hang on a second. This isn't Okay. Microsoft might be seemingly monopolizing the entire game in, gaming industry by buying everybody and everything, but P 
people are pissed about how much they're having to pay for a game, a digital game. And right now, Sony's in hot water because they got caught. They gave everyone one option to buy games, and everybody's like, what the fuck is this? Microsoft will be next. I'm not, yeah. I, I can't tell you how it's going to happen or, or you know, who's going to be like, okay, hang on a second. Um, will they get in trouble for this same thing? Specifically, I, <laughs> it might be trickier uh, because they allow people to go through third parties to buy digital content. They give people the option. If they take that away, absolutely lawsuits will, will, will follow. You also have to think, they let, I, I think they let Sony make the move here. I think they, I think these gaming companies, when they try new things to see if it works or to, they see the other one, like, Oh, they're getting kind of greedy. I think the other ones step back and watch each other potentially mess up and take heat. So they know what they shouldn't do or, or they're like, okay, we'll do that, but let's find another route. Or not even just sit back and watch but li- literally set them up for failure. I mean, these guys, they're, they're juggernauts. They have money. They have teams. Their whole goal is to collect information and if possible, sabotage. Sony, this is nothing new. Sony's been, they said, last six years. Why is it a problem suddenly? Because I can tell you right now, another company that could equally be in hot water, but nobody is looking at them because they're so family friendly and it's like the equivalent of Disney. Nintendo. Nintendo games have always charged an arm and a leg. Since the Nintendo 64, they've always been super expensive games, super expensive accessories. PlayStation and Xbox, their games were cheaper and better quality than Nintendo, but no one has ever complained about Nintendo prices. So Sony just probably said, well, Nintendo's doing it. We can match that. And then it became a problem. Why? But nobody else has Nintendo games on their servers, on their services. You can't play Mario on PlayStation. You can't play Mario on Xbox. You play it on PC, but you have to use an emulator. So there really is no, like, that's a monopoly, basically. I think what people are mad about is that Sony has their games everywhere. But why are we paying 60 bucks here when it's the same game on here? Right. Or much less. Yeah, it's not It's not just about the PlayStation the PlayStation exclusives. It's people are able to go through third parties like they should be able to and purchase the same game someone with only a PlayStation is playing but spend $20 less. So me really playing <clears throat> devil's advocate, uh, I'm going to, and this is just an opinionated devil's advocate, what is probably happening is we're paying the losses that Sony has possibly incurred from uh, PS5, uh, the, the dry spell of PS5s, the surgence of third party sites, because what back like not even four or five years ago, there are sites like G2A and other sites where it's like you could get a code for a game typically would cost you 60 bucks. You spend like $10. You get these discount sites where however they get the game, you pay not even the full price. You get the code. You get a whole brand new game for like 10 bucks. Someone somewhere is losing money to make those kind of sales available to the masses. Well, this, this only happened in 2019 when they, when Sony, uh, set like, put their foot down on purchasing games through third parties. So this is still a pretty recent thing. It's like right before the PlayStation five dropped conveniently. And you know, what does the PlayStation five not have a disc drive? You can buy them with a disc. No, you can (laughs) buy them with a disc drive, but they're, they're harder to find. And they're for some reason, like the one I showed you more expensive. Yeah. Yeah, that's another thing that's got them in hot water is the, the jacked up price, which, as we were talking about before the show, uh, my theory on that is people were able to import PS5s from around the world because changing your region code and making all those games playable, that's that's kids play for everyone now. People just want the system and then they can get it jailbroken, do whatever they need to do to make it play their region. So people were probably getting their PS5s from other countries for cheaper. Oh. And 
we don't know. We, you know, we're looking at Sony as a whole, but you got to think Sony's broken up into different branches. Are we looking at Sony America, Sony UK, um, you know, all of S, you know, all of Sony Entertainment Corporation? Um, because I'm pretty sure they all, you know, they, they had to have come into agreements with this. Uh, and now across the board, the PS5 prices have jacked up. It's yeah. still hard to get. So they've got to make that that revenue some way, somehow. And it sucks because the, those of us who already own, whether it's a PS4 or a PS5, we're paying to make up the loss. We Sony doesn't have the budget that Microsoft has. And Nintendo doesn't need to worry about having that kind of budget because they've crafted their own lane that they legally can monopolize because they created it. It's basically well, they created their monopoly board and said, this is ours. You can't have it. Well, and, and the no one can complain. The PlayStation uh, console price increase isn't for us yet. All this stuff is for UK. I think the UK caught up to us. We're already $500 for the console. We already went up. We're already $500 for the disc. We're already $400 for the digital only. Um, I think they came to match us. And you've got to think conversion. It, you know, money are you, conversion. Are you fucking defending Sony? No, I, I, like I said, I'm playing devil's advocate. Do Man. I like what they did? No, absolutely Look. not. But we're also, as the consumers, we're also not off the hook. We're hearing the pissed off response, which totally makes sense. Nine million people's a pretty pissed off response. Yeah. Yeah. But also how many of those people probably went through some shady backdoor sites to get their games and did not even pay. Like you go to the store and you legitimately pay full price for your game. It's hot. And then I go and say, <laughs> I paid $2 for my game. If this was Mike, if we were talking about Microsoft, we both know you would not be giving any excuses. You you know what? I will admit I am that. totally I'm calling you I'm out. totally no. biased against Microsoft. I'm, just, I'm trying not to be biased cuz I love Sony. I love PlayStation. I love I love my PC. It is Microsoft, but it's not an Xbox. I used to be an Xbox owner. I have my issues with Microsoft more than any other company, but in when I saw this happened several days ago. I was like, holy shit. Now, when I read it, I was upset. And to be fair, when they did the PlayStation thing, I called them out on their stunt. And I said, the whole selling out is probably this big promotional stunt to, to rack up sales. So I've given Sony shit where Sony deserves shit. But at the same time, I look on Twitter and I look and I read the comments and I read what people say. A lot of people, they read the article, they stop there, but actually read the comments sometimes of the people that are gamers in the community. We are not always the most pure of heart. If anything, to be completely honest, we're probably one of the most trolly groups on earth oh, next to no, the anime no. community. You know, anime and gaming communities are, are the most, I think, are the are the most fun. I love being part of the, the, these communities, but equally, they're, they're just as toxic just as shitty. As, and it's, as, as toxic and shitty. Nobody could possibly hear this book. Well, actually, no, fuck you. You know damn well these two communities are the most toxic communities out there. Just as, as amazing fun as, they, as they, are, they are, the dark side is just as bad. The, yeah, exactly. And I what, think, what do you, what do you think will be the next company that will get hit with this? You think it'll be Microsoft or you think Nintendo oh, has a long time coming? Microsoft right now, they're riding a high wave and everyone is just accepting what they're doing because it seems like it's beneficial for us. They're going around and they're buying everything up. And what, what we're probably not seeing is Microsoft is trying to make that money so they can stay competitive but they don't have that bank account that Microsoft has. So Microsoft doesn't have to make that move yet. They can go and they can be like, Bane, do as you please. Buy from whoever you want. We have a partnership with them anyway. 
And we just go like, oh man, Microsoft is not doing this. Why is Sony doing it? It's the money. If you flip the, if you reverse the roles, Microsoft would be doing what Sony is doing right now. If they had the bank account or if they didn't have the bank account, it's just who has the bigger bank and Sony can't keep up with Microsoft purchases and Microsoft every year they buy a major developer. And that probably this might just be petty on Sony's part with Microsoft buying IPs and now slowly saying it's going to be here and here only. That hurts Sony. They have less to offer as time goes on. So they have to make some some shitty moves. If anything, I think Microsoft put them in the position where they had to do something drastic and get themselves in the mud, get them dirty, and either it's going to either work in their favor or fuck them over. It's going to work in their favor. Because I'm going to tell you what the next move is going to be. Microsoft is going to make another big purchase in the near future, and they're going to come out looking like saints when they do it. So, and then after that, watch what Sony does. They're amassing money to stay in the game. Because Microsoft's goal is to own it all. Every little bit of it. And it's convenient because they offer that subscription service. Microsoft's plan is for you not to own shit. They don't want you to own anything. They just want you to put, they want you on that lifetime pay us. The minute you stop paying, think about oh, it. I mean, we're all about to be on that when when Sony r- releases their tiers and Nintendo le- releases their tiers. You think buying digital Nintendo, games, yeah. you know, are, are expensive enough as it is, but start adding all these different tiers and stuff to it. Yeah, it's going to be a They're lot more expensive than back path. in the day when you just had a, a, you know, simpler times. Xbox Live. A subscription just so you could play online and then you buy your games. Sony, you didn't have to pay for the online part and you just went through their store and bought their games like simple yeah. times. So it's, 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 it's a really shitty situation. I, I do know they, they have made bad calls, but I feel like they're in a corner and they're fighting to get I think, out. I think Sony, <laughs> It, if this if this lawsuit uh, ends up, you know, hurting Sony and and these these people win uh, this lawsuit, uh, I would not be surprised if Sony didn't you know backpedal a little bit and then whether they're forced to or not start allowing uh, at least the game codes from third party purchases. Think Sony will lose. I think there's a I think there's an interesting amount of evidence there that says that they're being pretty nefarious a little, little bit greedy that's what i see but that's not that's not what the lawsuit's claiming they have to claim that sony has a monopoly on it and there's a lot of factors proving that it's not really a monopoly yeah they're just they just charge more for the use of their service they basically tell developers if you want to sell your game on here this is how you have to do it i mean Think of it like this. It's like Apple. Apple caught shit for literally the same reason. Literally. And what happened with Apple? They're still kicking. They're talking about going to space. They were like, oh, yeah, wow. Okay, you caught us. That's us. You you, you guys don't think anything will happen out of this. Like, maybe they'll pay out or something and settle with these people, but you don't think any any changes will happen. No, there's going to be change. I think there's going to be some price changes. So the pricing is going to be a little bit uh, lenient, I would say, but they're not going to pay out. That they're not the, uh, the way I see this. They're not going to win the. They're not going to lose the lawsuit. They're going to win. They're going to prove that they're not the monopoly. That there's other options. That if you don't like the service, you don't have to use the service. There's always more. So the fact that they can prove that they're not a monopoly is going to be why they're going to win this lawsuit and not pay out. But the repercussions of the lawsuit will be maybe they'll reduce prices or when they have sales, the sales will be more worth it. Okay, so 
you know, with, with that said, if nothing, if nothing really comes of this, right. You, you guys don't think Sony might go, okay, well, if they're selling this game for thirty nine ninety nine for Xbox and, and PC, but we're still selling it for fifty nine ninety nine, and we don't have thir- we don't allow third parties. You don't think they'll lower that price to match other consoles or platforms just to keep people on the PlayStation? Because people that, won't leave twenty dollars for a game, and that's just one game. That's not you know talking about all the other games these people might purchase. That's a lot of money that adds up really quick, and it's a good enough reason for people to switch from PlayStation to Microsoft or to from PlayStation to, to Xbox, if they feel like the games will continue to be cheaper, unless uh, Microsoft were to go down the same route and say no third party purchases. The, the reason, even if they did lower, it wouldn't even be a noticeable lowering because we, as the consumers have proven time and time again, we, we do this. We fuss while opening our wallet. We literally go, you know what? This is highway robbery. This is highway robbery. I really don't want to pay this. Uh, I'm refusing to accept this. Uh, how much was it again? Okay, here, take my $100. But this is really highway ro- And we do that. You, want, you really want to talk about highway robbery, the fucking Madden FIFA games. 2K, <laughs> That's those true. games are highway. You know what? Speaking of which, there, my friends, like one bought Madden 23, the new one, right? And he was able to share play it on his PlayStation. And another friend plays with him. He's like, man, this game sucks. I'm not going to buy it. Next fucking day, he's played it. He paid a hundred bucks for it. We, While we, talking shit the day before. We kind yeah, of the, do it to ourselves. Yeah. yeah they you know, do it to themselves. On, on one hand, the games don't make sense to me because like, yeah, they're fun, but it's literally the same game every single year. You're paying year $70 with, for a roster update. With, for a roster update and maybe, maybe slightly better graphics, maybe an extra feature or something. Oh, and if but you want to talk again, about bullshit. Call of Duty kind of does the same thing. They just spread it out a little bit, a little bit more. But it's not really yeah. every single year. Yeah, they do. It's not every single year, but uh, I feel like I'm different with Call of Duty. Anymore. Call of, Call of Duty. Call of Duty. Call of, yeah, you're Call right. Of Call of Duty. It is Call of Duty Call of from now on. I don't buy Call of Duty every year, and many people I know don't buy Call of Duty every year. They wait till like, it's that one game that, like, you're right, it's been three years. I didn't buy Cold yeah. War. I didn't buy Vanguard. I think I'll, be, I'll get, you know, Modern Warfare 2, or I'll skip one or two. But it's the same thing, though. It is it is another roster graphic update for a hundred bucks, seventy bucks, eighty bucks, whatever you're gonna pay for it. You want a good example of Sony being fine? How many times has EA been in trouble? They're just a developer. How many times is Activision in trouble? They've just they're just a developer. Bungie, all of them have been in trouble, almost over similar things. And guess what? They still do it. They apologize. They give you this sale. They, they do what you want for a little bit. And then once everyone's forgotten, they go right back to the old ways. And we just roll with it. We don't even bat another eye. This kicked off because the wrong person got pissed off. It came across to the wrong person who probably one day woke up and was like, they looked at their credit card, probably saw their kids spent like $300 for one game <laughs> and was like, uh, what? And then it became a big issue. Your kid shouldn't have been just having the credit card. Like, why the fuck did you give your kid the credit Guys, you, card? You realize in our lifetime, we went from buying buying a brand new game for five to ten dollars, brand new game, to sixty to a hundred dollars, depending on what version of the version. game you wanted. Like Jesus Christ! And that all happened within twenty years, man. Oh yeah, Back we went in the from day, buying 120 a bucks. pound of bacon for five bucks, and now a pound of bacon is like fifteen to twenty dollars. Back in the day, 120 bucks could get you no less than like four games on one of the major consoles. If you were on a handheld, you walked out that store with like at least six games for $120. Now $120 gets you a game and a half because they never finish games. So it's like a game and a half for 120 bucks. 
so you get one full game yeah yeah (laughs) yeah 120 bucks and you might get a full game between the two that's a that's a terrible thing that's happening right now though is like we're not getting completed games we were okay when bethesda did it because you know that was bethesda but their games were their bugs and stuff were the charm yeah their bugs but their games were also massive they were huge they They weren't empty now either that now we're getting the same quality of games but with more bugs it's like all right guys what's going on here are you guys getting lazier are you treating your employees and we know they're treating their employees terrible which makes me wonder with more bugs and staying in alpha and beta or early access for fucking 10 12 years which makes me wonder why i'm looking at you Star Citizen, I'm looking at you. Star Citizen, as much as I love you, this you are very yeah, 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 yeah. satisfactory. I'm not looking at you play. yet. I'm not looking at satisfactory yet, but they're on the they're on the radar. Yeah, they're on the cusp. But for all these hours that they put these the developers through to not release finished products, what the heck do they have them doing? Like, I've always wondered that. I'm like, you're working these developers to death. They're barely at home. They're working over 40 hour weeks, rushing them for deadlines that you still release an unfinished product. You've got indie developers that their whole entire support is on Patreon, still putting out updates in their games faster than triple A developers with entire teams. Now, I will say on the flip side, we again, as the consumers are pretty shitty. Because even with those indie developers I mentioned, I'll look at Patreon and people get so pissed when an update hasn't dropped after a month or two months. And I'm like, oh, yeah, we're doing it to ourselves. Like, I won't argue that. Yeah. And I'm like, chill. The hell? You know, f- replay the phasm- game. Phasmophobia, you know, it's the only game I can th- really think of. It's the first game that comes to mind when I think of an indie game that really has only been out for like, what, maybe three years? Three to four. I don't think it's been, I don't think it's been four, man. It's like 2018, 2019 when it was actually released. That, you know, no, I think Yuli's right. It, it was out, but it didn't gain popularity. Like the last two years. Until like the last two years. It didn't gain popularity until like COVID. Same with uh, Among Us. It's been out for like. Yeah, Among Us was out for a while actually. Mm -hmm. And it just, a lot of games didn't gain popularity until COVID. September 2020. There it is, September 2020. But you did, COVID. but you mentioned, but you mentioned Phasmophobia and, you know, they're pretty good on their updates in their game since we played it. Well, that, that, that was my point is that, the, you know, the first game that came to mind that, that the consumers as well, if you look and when they put out their update log and you read the comments and shit, like generally it's good. You still get those pieces of shit, like not good enough, new map, new ghost, shit game. It's like, what, what what are we doing here? Do you not see how much effort they're putting into the fucking game? Yeah, I, I can imagine they've had to like double their employ their in, employees to, or at to least keep up like with the upper, demand. Yeah. Because I really thought that game was going to die when it first came out. And they've, not because it was a bad game, but just because it didn't have, like, it was like, it was fun for like a couple months. And it's like, all right, well, you know, why do I, why would I keep playing if I already know the game? And then, Every few months, they've just update, 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 and they've killed it, man. And now the game is not just, you know, playable for much longer than it was to begin with, but it consistently stays fun. And it's hard for an indie game to do that. It's hard for any game to do that. But when I see these other developers putting games out or being forced to put games out that are way more buggy and fucked up than phasma like phasmophobia it's understandable when there's bugs and a little like little pauses here and there and it's really not that bad can compared to what it was but i mean ask lady bird she still gets mad about it that's that's a small company it's hardly a company i mean they are a company but compared to you know these triple a games and you know the, the entire gaming industry like they're they're pretty small they're a tiny indie company and they're managing to keep up with the game put out put out stuff for us to play and enjoy it. And I'm sure there's people in their Patreon and, and forums that suck, uh, but it's impressive how they keep up with it. GTFO. I honestly forgot about that game. GTFO. It's fully released now, so fully released access and can be released. Pretty fucking dope. It, it did. It finally fully released. That's yeah, a full release. Oh. Now. When did it, when did it fully release? How like, I, I had no idea. Early this year. year. I thought, or 
earlier. No, this early year. this year. So they they had a game out for what about two years, two to three years. That game was out, maybe. Yeah. It's probably about. I think it was about two years. It was out in early access, and then they finally came out with a. So it's fucking possible. I won't. But that game isn't as expansive as Star Citizen because we yeah. keep going to that one. Star Citizen is still one of the most unique fucking games I've ever played. I played it this morning, buggy as hell, but we kept trying to get into a game. I you, Star Citizen, like, yeah, they got they have a lot of issues, but as expansive as that game is, it's it's also understandable. But there's also a lot of tiny things here and there that they could fucking fix. But yeah, before we go down this elevators. rabbit hole of complaining about you know, <laughs> <laughs> what people should yeah. could be doing, should be doing, all, all this jazz. Twitch. Oh, we should just leave it on this note. Twitch? Twitch. Twitch. What did Twitch do now? Twitch. You know what they did. Well, well, we know what they did. Yeah, we know oh, what man. they did. We talked about Listen it on to our uh, Gunpowder Red episode. Uh, yeah. Project Gunpowder Red, guys. That that's our other podcast. Project right? Gunpowder Red. I heard that and I was just like, I yo. <laughs> yeah. He's, yeah. he's technically wrong. It is a project. Uh, um, I, mean, I called it yeah. Gunsmoke Red for a full episode. Gun Gun Red. Podcast, we don't even know what our own shit's called. Uh anyways. <laughs> <laughs> Gunpowder Red, guys. Uh, Spotify and Apple. We, uh, you know, that, that this episode's going to be released soon f- for Gunpowder Red, but it's we we touched on Twitch and all the bullshit they've been in trouble for and everything. Oh, no, actually. Uh, I just wanted to discuss and get y'all's thoughts on Twitch finally allowing uh, affiliates and partners to multi-stream to other platforms without consequences. I picture a kid pouting in the corner when they were told that they can't have their way. Uh, so they just had to accept. Let's be honest. It's not true multi-stream, right? You can stream to YouTube and, and the other platform I forgot, like Trovo, while being a partner. You can only multi-stream to Instagram and TikTok Live. Yeah. You can't you can't stream on YouTube and the other major ones and Twitch. It's still either or. But the difference is when you were a Twitch partner, you were locked in to live streaming on Twitch. That was it. That's what Dr. Disrespect had to deal with. And then he did one YouTube stream and they really got on his ass. Which is also, here's the other thing. And I'm wondering, I'm like, well, no one's ever brought this up. Twitch was playing favorites with that as well. Because even they weren't abiding by their own contract. Um, because... The way they made it sound is if you were a Twitch partner, you could not live stream anywhere else. So how come some of the major YouTubers were able to get around that before this even got resolved? I heard that some of them would rewrite their contracts with Twitch to allow that. Power of having lawyers. (laughs) <laughs> well, for, and power lots of being money. smart and not just signing the terms and services read that shit well after what y'all just told me th- this is what i'm i'm reading here Twi- twitch streamers previously could not stream on other platforms such as youtube or facebook if they had a partner contract with the site now those with with that all important purple tick will be allowed to stream wherever they wish as long as they're not streaming on twitch at the same time twitch is still well, being smart yeah, if you scroll down, though, at that same article, you see that Twitter post that really just condenses what the fuck they meant. And it says right there, do singular streams on YouTube or Facebook, but do a multi-stream on Instagram Live or TikTok. Basically, Twitch is smart because if you look at the bigger picture, where typically does a Twitch partner that doesn't have content elsewhere, where does their audience typically reside? Twitch? <laughs> TikTok, Instagram. I was going to say that the the big the big social media platforms where those there's are a ton of gaming Ooh, content, content creator live content, uh, content on Instagram and TikTok. I want to meet those that, people. This is why I'm saying With Twitch special brand of people. Twitch was smart. They've given the illusion of freedom with it because here's the catch. Most of the people that don't have that legal backing to renegotiate <clears throat> the contracts, most of those people, they're off Twitch. They're on YouTube now. So the reason Twitch finally probably let off is because anyone who had that influence and power to, to really 
tell them, nah, you want me? This is my contract is mostly gone. So those partners are still technically at Twitch's whim because you stream to Instagram live. Most of your followers already follow you on Instagram. Why are they going to watch you on Instagram if you're already live on Twitch? They probably also already follow you on TikTok. It's probably how they know you exist. So why are they going to watch you on TikTok if you're already live on Twitch? But you can't stream to YouTube where you actually have the potential of grabbing new followers at the same time. So you have to isolate your <coughs> Twitch followers that may not be willing to get off the platform to find you over on YouTube. Where now you once again are competing with the big boys and girls. So a lot of people probably think, oh, well, their followers will just roll over and follow them on and watch them on YouTube. In most cases, sure. But if you're doing the exact same thing on YouTube that you're going to do on Twitch, why am I going to go watch you on YouTube? So they basically would have to start over. Now, how many people are willing to go through the grind that they went through the first time to make partner and start all over again on YouTube if they haven't already been establishing a community there? Because if you look at the big YouTubers, the big Twitch streamers, they've all established a community in both places, but they also already could do things on both. They had their videos on YouTube that were snippets or their live streams condensed so people could get used to them. Most Twitch partners don't have that time. They've never built that community outside of Twitch. I look, sometimes I'm curious and they'll have their links and I look at their YouTube channel or I look at their, you know, their other social media that you're now allowed to stream on. And their community is so much smaller. They'll have 8,000 followers on Twitch, 2,000 followers on Instagram, and their YouTube channel, maybe 300. Because they've never had the time to do anything with it. So half those people, they're not going to take advantage of it. It's too little too late. They're too invested into Twitch. The move to stream somewhere else fresh is going to scare them because they don't have that necessary outside influence on Instagram. Sure. They can post going live on YouTube. Some of the people in their community probably got favorite YouTubers. I'm telling you right now, Twitch partner. I might like over here goes live at the same time as Markiplier. Who do you think I'm going to watch? I'm going to watch Markiplier. Corey goes, I'm going to watch Corey. Doesn't mean I don't like this person, but I'm invested in this community on YouTube. And I'm invested in your community on Twitch. So Twitch sat back and they were like, you know what? Let's let them run out and play. Give them that freedom with some restrictions. It'll keep them here. Once they go out there and see how dangerous the big world of those other platforms are, and those communities are already established, and they try to step foot in it, and they get scared off, they'll come back. Well, that's a and dangerous all gamble stream they're losing. Here. So I think Twitch thought it through. They knew what they were doing. Yeah, I, th I think that is a, a dangerous gamble because, you know, yeah, when you're talking about the the big the bigger streamers, they can way more easily take most of their community and go to YouTube or maybe even Trovo. I, I don't know. Uh, you know, Trovo is growing, to, yeah. but I don't I don't I don't know if I'd say Trovo is big enough for a, a huge streamer to risk taking all his all his whole community with but um maybe soon enough but youtube definitely so will this uh once again being that it's a it's a gamble twitch really doesn't have much to lose they've ensured that they'll still make their monetary value they've ensured that top tier streams are not shared. And in the same regard, it still kind of keeps affiliates in that limbo. Because if you think about it, if Twitch said you can multi-stream to us and everywhere else, the way honestly most affiliates already do anyway, and they let the partners do that, and then the partners were able to get comfortable and start slowly realizing, oh my goodness, you know, the community's been great. They're moving over with me to YouTube. 
if more partners started trickling to streaming elsewhere, more affiliates actually would start to be able to surface up and possibly become partners. Because then a lot of people would get more comfortable with YouTube and, and the, the freedom of being able to actually, do I want to stream today? Sure. If not, I can recycle an old one and it's a VOD and people will actually watch it. So it keeps, it keeps all the stuff they've got in play exactly how they want it. Under the guise of something that everyone wanted a long time ago anyway. So personally, and I'm already side eyeing Twitch as is. So <laughs> I've been well, side eyeing them for makes years. Makes you wonder if they did this, how many people do they want to sign up as partner? They offer the partnership role, but they turn it down because they know that that partnership role means I can only make content here. Honestly, and I hate to say it, I think. I think even a lot of people right now who say they wouldn't be a partner if Twitch came to them after they invested it and was like, you can be a partner. I think a lot of the people would jump at it um, because for them, the excitement of knowing their work has been noticed, uh, knowing that, you know, oh, crap, my time has finally come. Overwhelms them without thinking it through. Because I know, for example, Wild for Games, when he was on the show, he has more than enough potential to be a Twitch partner. He willingly turned it down because of the restrictions of that contract. He turned it down. I, I will say if, if, it, if anyone is, has been an affiliate for a good while and they're doing very well and they get approached with being partner, in that moment... If you had not spent all that time you had been working to potentially reach partner on building your portfolio on YouTube, for instance, and building your, you know, even if it's just putting out videos and, and, and clips and whatever the case is, if you haven't been doing that, that's your fault. If you find yourself in a position where you take partner, but then you also realize you can't go anywhere else because you didn't develop, you didn't create a portfolio. I, I, I'm using the word portfolio, but you know what I mean. Uh, a place where you put your, your content and, and all of your stuff for people to see outside of just one platform, this platform being Twitch. It's, it's, it's that person's fault. Even if it's occasionally, you know, put stuff up there so... You start building your catalog and you have some diversity, you know, because if, if you switch partners, if, if you're building up subscribers to a YouTube channel, even if you're not streaming and you have enough and you were partner for a while and then you decided, uh, I don't want to, I don't want to re up my contract or something happens between you and Twitch and, and it's no longer for you. YouTube is very likely to take you. If you, if you have partner likely. behind you. But if you didn't build up your YouTube channel and you and it just and you show nothing, and you have an empty channel, they're not going to take you, even if you had partner behind you. You didn't build anything with them. Yeah, because their their whole point of wanting to take you is you show that you can get people to to your channel onto YouTube and keep them there. Well, speaking of side eyeing, we're going to we're going to leave the gaming industry everyone and we're going to head on over to the streaming business. Oh lord. HBO oh. Max and Discovery Plus will be merging. Warner Brothers decided, you know what? You guys really like HBO Max. They seem like they have something really really good going on there. So good in fact that we decided to say for whatever reason, fuck you. And in 2023, this time next year, HBO Max will no longer exist. It will merge with Discovery Plus. It's not going to be HBO Max and, and Discovery Plus. No, they're probably going to take the Discovery Plus name or they're going to make a so new name. Right now. Discovery They've already made it clear. Max. They've already made it clear it's not going to be called HBO Max. They're going to change the entire format. HBO Max is working. As a matter of fact, out of every streaming service that I've messed with, I like HBO Max the most. HBO Max was rapidly it's, becoming a favorite. It's it's a solid platform. 
It's not the it's not the cheapest, but it's not the most expensive. They haven't had hike prices yet. They have good the content. Price was worth it. They won't now. I'm not a huge. I mean, they will. It just will be under new management, and it won't be I, HBO Max. You know, the, for those of Shit, that that don't know me, I'm not a huge DC fan, but I am a huge Titans fan, and and Titans and Doom Patrol have been doing pretty well on their platform, and it, it, they're decent shows that are most likely going to get the axe by the end of the year amongst most of their stuff raised by wolves already got axed for this reason. It wasn't because of a viewer. I thought it was a viewership thing. I was like, you know, it's a weird show. Like maybe people just aren't, well, it's like a weird ass sci-fi movie where in the distant future dudes have mullets and they're fighting in the desert. I don't know. Like it's, it's a weird ass show. We, we but like they had the views. The, the, the views were there. Ridley Scott was doing a good job. And they pulled the plug and they said it's because of uh, contract issues. And then uh, a little later they came out with what's happening here with Discovery Plus and, and, and HBO Max. And, and I don't want to talk about it on the show. More like it would be an in-depth on Gunpowder Red, which, by the way, if you guys haven't, go, go subscribe to Gunpowder Red, our No Holds Bar podcast where we really dive into the topics, usually unfiltered. But when yeah, Burns really sent me the – the demograph chart that they were using to describe the HBO max community and the discovery plus community. And that the fact discovery plus is absorbing HBO max. And I think I sent it to you guys in the group chat. If not, I have to send it to you. That just made me even more upset because I was just like, if this isn't the most, uh, I, I, if I'm if 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 I'm gonna give a hint to literally how they determined it, if this isn't the most gender influenced bullshit I had ever seen, and this is like their official documentation and how they described it, and I, I, I got to send it to you guys, and maybe I'll post it in the Discord if you guys want to see it for yourselves. Join our Discord; you can find the link on the website. And I'm gonna post it. You guys can see for yourself. Th- this is how they determined which one was going to take over the other. And I was just like, wow. And once again, it's kind of something we've done to ourselves because they're following a trend that's popular on like most of the streaming platforms and Netflix and stuff. Anytime. I think discovery plus specializes in reality shows and they are, they've already said HBO max once it's absorbed, they're really going to start pushing those reality shows. Me personally, I cannot stand reality shows. I hate them so much. I think they're, they're brain murdering entertainment. I know people will get fake sci-fi and stuff. It's about the story. It's all about the story. The whole real world crap. Personally, I cannot stand, but I'm like, you know what? To each their own. You watch what you watch. I watch what I watch. It just sucks that it seems like the, I want to say the, the weed lifestyle is just getting shafted in terms of entertainment where we can go. HBO Max was really catering to us. I mean, they were catering to us strong and that's why I liked it. And now it seems like they were like, all right. Well, you guys got the, the 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 gaming industry. Y'all don't need this. And then they came through and they they took over. Of course, they were like, oh, you know, because Discovery footed the bill that, you know, they dug themselves a hole in paying for the, the non-existing now DCEU. So they get to call the shots. And I'm like, oh, I'm sure there's some way that this could have been could have been worked out better. I'm at more. Uh more kindled to the fire to touch. But today they announced that legendary entertainment who are the, um, I guess half the team that worked on movies such as Godzilla versus King Kong, Godzilla, King of monsters, black Kansman, detective Pikachu, Pacific rim, the Jurassic world movies, the man of steel, the dark Knight trilogy, the Watchmen movie, like Superman going. returns, trick or treat. Are looking to to work with someone else because Warner Brothers is doing this bullshit, and they're looking towards Apple or Sony. Wait, you, so Legendary is pulling out? Legendary Entertainment is pulling out of Warner Brothers. 
You know what? Be, so because not, of this. So they're because of this. Oh, people. What? That was announced happening? today that they're looking for another company what? to work. Fuck yes, let's go. Let they, Legendary they, come out with their own streaming service. That's all we need, right? Everyone is another fucking another streaming service. service. But I don't blame them because HBO Max was set in stone. It was looking good. It was fresh. It was sleek. The prices were all right. They weren't too bad. The content was good. They had a lot of good original shows. Why would I keep wanting to work with someone who's going to make a shitty move like that? And I ju- I've been saying, and I think we all agree, that this is not going to turn out well for them. Whatever streaming service drops is going to do poorly. Or maybe Because they're not. axing so much shit. No, and they're- no, I don't think it's going to go bad. It's not going to be like that. They're, lo- they're going to lose a specific niche of customers, yeah. but they're going to keep a lot more. And to be fair... I, I do have a D- Discovery Plus only because I love rewatching Mythbusters, Dirty Jobs, and um, The Fisherman when I forgot the name of it just now. Crab Fisherman or something like that. Those are the three reasons I still I still have that shit. The, the, the reality show niche is, as, as fellow weaves, it's bigger than we care to admit. Most people prefer reality shows i don't know if it's some self-satisfactory of living vicariously through someone else's life for an hour <clears throat> it's a bunch but, of things some people just can't watch with lack of better words cartoons like that's which, how they're going to describe it they can't no they, but I, they, I mean not even just like 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 cartoons i mean there's so many good movies like and we're not even talking like you know because first they're gonna think well not everyone's in the side i'm like not even talking like my personal preferences i mean historical dramas uh just ge- generic action generic roman i mean they're they're literally they literally find someone else's life more entertaining well, if you look at the popular shows of these things game of thrones spartacus um shit Netflix has been a hit with the um, what's it called, the blind date or whatever, where people like, reality try to reality show like uh, House of the Dragon. Love is blind. That's what's called a saving point for them because no, you don't, don't think, think so? so. No, too late. Yeah, because they're they, gonna move they all already, that stuff to their platform. They asked about their three billion dollars worth of product that they've worked on to save money. Because they don't think that they were going to make that money back with HBO Max alone or something like that. Like it was some stupid idea that they had. Uh, I, think I, they jumped, like the I think they jumped the gun. I don't like the idea of, of me wanting to rewatch Game of Thrones and having to have a Discovery Plus account. We knew this was going to happen when it was announced that fucking Discovery bought Warner Brothers. Or yeah. Yeah. We knew this was going to be an outcome. <clears throat> and But we didn't know to what extent. It was going to happen to this. I fucking blame true canceling. crimes. I blame true, true crimes. crimes. Hold up. Hold up. Which ones? I just blame the genre in general. And the thing is, I don't actually have anything personal against them. It's just <clears throat> the the audience is, pro- is when, when you look at it, the audience is also the similar to the people that would have a Discovery Plus because true crimes are based off of events that really happened and they're basically cinematically and, and I guess you are thematically Reportrayed to us, the viewer, which captures the audience. <clears throat> and for those who do not know, and you can look this up, Discovery Plus, Discovery, Discovery Plus's target, its main target audience are women. And true crimes, majority of the audience are female. And it's funny because it's like, I don't have an issue with true crimes. I actually find a few interesting at times. Um, but at the same time, I, I, I also feel like it's gotten a little bit carried away (laughs) because now it's absorbing things like HBO max, which was my little niche. That's my little niche. Well, now AT&T owns all of it. God, everything under the sun 
that we just talked about. AT and T owns. I mean, they're not wrong about the true crime. I don't think I know anybody in my family. So that sign up for AT and T now. If a year crime, from now right? you'd like to potentially save, oh, I listen $5. to it too, man. If I'm working DoorDash, I'll be listening to Crime Junkies, and I know who did it and shit like that. I think there's also a, a, a difference between listening like true crime podcasts and then the, the binge watching of true crime. True, I can't talk right now. True oh, crime. I can't watch shit like Forensic Files or the first yeah. 48. Like those shows are super fucking boring to me. Also, I just want to throw out there, uh, ladies, watching a true crime series from episode one to episode 10 does not make you a detective. Makes you an armchair detective. <laughs> it does not mean that the guy across the street mowing his lawn that happens to wave is a murderer. Or is he? Or is he? Or is I, he? I just well, I laugh every time. Like I saw my friends will talk and they'd be like, mm-hmm, I saw this. And the sentence always comes, I saw this in a true crime. And I'm like, oh my gosh. Really? They, once they say that, then you stab them and be like, did you see that? <laughs> did you see that? <laughs> I was like, did you see that? But you didn't see that. <laughs> well, we're going to end this on a, on a more upbeat note. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, anime picks of the week. That's Fuck right. You, Disney plus. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> that, we'll, we'll save all that for uh gunpowder red buddy. <laughs> you can let it all out there. Uh, you was about an anime. <laughs> Yuli. And I can't watch Yo. it. Anime pick of the week. Oh, fuck. Hey, let me open it up real quick. Uh, it's not it? a hentai, is it, Yuli? I said anime, not hentai. <laughs> He's like, let me open it up real quick. And I get concerned. I, right, okay, I have, well, I, I've downloaded a lot more, but you know what? I think okay, we're we'll going to come back to Yuli. Point. Oh, my God. Uh, Tachi, <laughs> anime pick so, of the week. What the so fuck? It's my, it's, it's, it's my pick because I had to start reading the manga because and this is why i said fuck you disney plus summertime rendering oh is so underrated and i'm mad because it's a disney plus exclusive wait is it yes but right now it's in disney plus jail so it's only on disney plus japan hey hey, touchy hey, touchy hey, hey, remember that that link i sent you yeah yeah yeah, yeah. it has it that's where I've been watching it. I'm gonna check that one out. I'm gonna have to check that link out. Jesus Christ! Saying, so, oh, so shit, what is it? Shit, we're still live. We're still going. <laughs> what What is it, Itachi? Uh, summertime rendering. Um, it, it it's it's a shonen, and I without basically giving uh, because I just I just started it. Oh, and, dude. And I'm going to I'm just going to read the synopsis real quick. But following the death of his parents, Shinpei Ajiro grew up in the Kafune sisters. Ushio grew up with the Kafune sisters, Ushio Mio. Uh, and after he grew up, he lives in Tokyo until he hears the startling news that Ushio passed away by drowning. He returns to the isolated town uh, and becomes suspicious when he notices that Ushio's body has marks around her neck, implying that she was strangled. Now, haunted by her ghost and assisted by Mio, Shinpei tries to find answers to what really happened to Ushio and possibly save the residents from strange, dark enigma. It's basically a it's a murder horror mystery with some of the best camera angles I have seen in an anime in a while. And the, the action that takes place is is so fast paced that at some points you forget it's a it's a murder mystery horror and you're just like swept up in the action and then it goes from action to dark and i'm like i need this in my life and it's it's so beautifully drawn and the story is actually good but because it's a disney exclusive it's not getting the attention i feel it deserves disney exclusive to who japan right now disney plus japan and they're saying we might not get it now. I think it came out like what April. Yeah, so it it's not like even on. Show. It's not even on high dive. Not even on. No, high it's dive. not on high dive. It won't be anywhere but Disney roll. Plus. Same as Bleach. Same as Bleach. Fuck you, Disney Plus. And we won't get it until maybe. Yeah, and everyone maybe wants a piece October. of anime pie. Yeah. All right, so, Yuli. Hmm. Yuli, what's Thanks, what's your guys. pick, man? My pick is the cover photo for High School of the Dead. I recently 
recently listened to the theme song and I and I'm like thinking about that. I'm like, this was a fucking dope. Band. Besides all the fan service in there, it was a dope no, song it, I, survival yeah, it, anime. It's, it's like a with a lot anime. of fan service, but it was fucking amazing. No, it is. It's and it's I'm absolute, sad absolute and only amazing. got one season. Rest in peace, the creator. He died while it was still being made. Now, hot, the the, the intro the, the the opening theme song for the, that show the opening is, theme was badass yeah I, just I the song alone my Spotify list man yeah. it's, it's a good ass song you can't tell All me right. you don't get pumped for that oh, I get real pumped it's 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 an awesome song uh, it's a great anime I, yeah uh, where can we watch that uh, right now it's on Hulu it used to be on HBO Max but they lost the contract to it so now it jumped to Hulu. <laughs> It used Probably to a good be on, thing because you know Discovery hey, Plus would have ruined it. I've watched it on Funimation. It was a long time ago, but is it no? It was on Funimation a long time. But it went from Funimation to HBO to Hulu now. Damn. Well, I don't. I don't think I mentioned this one before. Um, but my pick is Made in Abyss. Season two yeah. just came out. If you get, oh my god! First of all, guys, Made in Abyss is only on two platforms right now. It's on high dive. You can watch season one and season two, which is uh, they're in the middle of season two right now. Um, and then they have the movies on there as well, which uh, one of the movies in particular are a bridge between season one and season two. And then you can watch season one. I'm not sure about season two on Amazon prime. I don't know if they're, if prime is keeping up with it or not, but that's it. I can't, find it anywhere else. Uh, but if you guys do not know what made in abyss is, despite its kid friendly appearance and art style, uh, it's actually a very disturbing sci-fi, uh, dark horror series. It's, it's up. It's close to berserk in my opinion, as far as how fucked up it it can, it can be. Um, and for good reason, I, I don't blame them for not putting it on something like Netflix for us to watch. Um, maybe, maybe that's why it's not on Crunchyroll and Funimation. I don't know. But they'll um, allow that fucking kid cheerleading show on Netflix. <laughs> uh, but I, I highly recommend it. Basically guys, uh, it's about these people that live around a giant pit, uh, called the abyss. They, they don't know where it goes. They don't know how deep it actually goes. They just know how far they've explored, Season two is great. No spoilers. Don't worry. But they kind of delve into the history of that and how it came to become what it is uh, now. It's a really good show, guys. I highly recommend it. Re- recommend it. Um, I have not read the the manga series or the uh, the online um, digital publications on uh, the web comic Gamma. But if you guys have, I'd like to know how it is. But yeah, I, I highly recommend that one. Great soundtrack, too. Oh yeah. You guys will be watching it. And like, I don't, th- I think the first two episodes are pretty kid friendly. And then out of nowhere, it gets like fucked up real quick. And you're just like, it throws you for a loop on the, yeah, there's a couple of scenes track. that even I was like, holy shit. <laughs> like Jesus. Typical anime gets you no. all warm and fuzzy. And then they just stab you in the heart. Uh, and it's actually rated in Japan. It's rated R 15, like 15 and up. So yeah, a little bit more sure yeah that most of us are i, I wouldn't 20. let my kids watch it <laughs> like that at all so um on a random on a random side note before we completely wrap up the show for anyone who's been wondering where you can watch uh is it wrong to pick up girls in a dungeon season four if you've been looking on Crunchyroll and wondering why you can't see it it is on high dive um, I think High Dive get, has the rights to it first, and then once the season is complete, then Crunchyroll will get it. Uh, hopefully not on a... They'll probably do it on a week-to-week basis, which really will suck. But if you really want to watch it, you can watch it on High Dive. That's how I found out. I was like, oh, it's on High Dive, and I looked on Crunchyroll. Crunchyroll's that season three. I said, ooh, Crunchyroll's not the end-all, be-all yet. Yeah, and if, if you're guys- going to cancel your HBO subscription, that's like 14 bucks. you can get both high dive and crunchyroll for that same price that same i was gonna price. say high, high dive is pretty cheap i think it's like 4.99 or 5.99 yeah, $4. $4. $4. or something month. but y'all are sleeping on high dive if you're getting all your anime from crunchyroll and funimation because they they have some stuff on there that you will not find anywhere else and oh, it's not censored for meal and gold and it's meal and gold it's solid man it's <sighs> a good purchase that is awesome. call of the night Okay, I recommend Call of the Night. Jesus Christ, that one's so good. 
I've been I've been reading it. I need to catch up on watching it, but I've read it and I'm like, I yeah, I'm gonna watch it. Oh this. dude, the the OP and the ED is so good. The opening and ending of it, uh, those songs, they got me. The band's called Creepy Nuts. Look them up. So good. Hopefully they don't get the wrong Google image on now. <laughs> but anyway. That is uh, all for today's episode. Thank you so much, everybody, for tuning in. Make sure, once again, to check out our store, thegzshop.com, and grab yourself some exclusive merchandise. Support us on patreon.com forward slash OSN dash media for some amazing perks, early access, ad free listening, and basically get to chat with us before the episodes come out. Get your feedback. All the Instagram, the Twitter. We post daily on that. Got updates and news that we don't talk about here on there. Yeah. So. So hit us up on our social medias. Stay in the know. Visit our website, osn-media.com. Anyway, you guys have been amazing. Stay safe out there. Look after yourself and look after each other. We'll catch all you wonderful people in the next podcast.